Okay, Parshas Vayakel Shkolim. All right. Um, uh, am I correct? This uh, this week is Parsha Shkolim. I think so. Uh, yeah, Kisisa. I do believe. Yeah. We, uh, that's I do believe that it's also uh, Parsha Shkolim this week, um, which is uh, you know it's the way it works out in a. Um, in a leap year, mm-hmm. because uh, in a regular year, Parsha Shkolim is Parsha Mishpatim. And in a regular year, you know, Purim is, you know, between Titzavah and Kisisa, right, in a regular year. But in a leap year, because the extra Ador, it all gets pushed uh, a few weeks later. So, uh, you know, the, uh, always the Shas before Rosh Chodesh Ador is... Um, is uh, Parsha Shkolem, which I, so in this case it's uh, the Shas for Rosh Chodesh Adar Sheni. So I do believe that is, uh, that's this Shabbos. The Shabbos is, um, at the, uh, when was Purim Cotton? Was it last week? When did we have our Purim Cotton Suda? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, of course, for sure. Yeah. So it's, okay. Purim Cotton was two weeks ago, right? Mm-hmm. Not, la- not, not last, not last week. week. Okay, right. So okay, we're done. So this week it's it's Vayakel and Shkolin. Okay, that's the Shabbos right before Shabbos Mivorchim of Ador Sheni. All right, so we're going to uh, discuss you know how it works out this year as opposed to how it works out in a uh, in a regular year. All right. As we mentioned, you know uh, we discussed this in Parshas Truma that. Uh, you know, the Truma Tetzave are the plans for the Mishkan. Vayakob Kurei talks the actual building of the Mishkan. And we discussed how uh, thought and action are sort of inverses of each other. What Sof Maisa is B'mach Shav right? Right? Yeah, and uh, so that's why you know, we explained, therefore, the discrepancy you know, of why in Truma, you know, it's the Oron first and then the other Kalim and then the Mishkan. And in this week's parasha, it discusses making the Mishkan first and then the Oron and Kalim. Because, uh, you know, in concept, the Oron is first because it's what, you know, the Iker of the Mishkan, it's the Iker of the Ashros Ashkina. In action, of course, you build the house first. Because as Betzalo mentioned, you know, Betzalo says to Moshe Rabbeinu, Kelem shani osa hecho nachnisem. You know, have to, so you have to build the house first. So this parasha talks about the, the making of it as opposed to Truman and Tetzave that talk about the plans for it. Mm-hmm. Now in a regular year, where there's, you know, you go straight from Adar to Nisan and there is no Adar Shani. So as we mentioned, how does it work out? You know, how does it all fit? Right, it, it works out that Purim comes out before Parshas Kisisa. Right, you have Truma Tetzavah, the plans for the Mishkan, and then you have Purim. Right? Because Purim in a regular year is on that side of things. Machshava. Vayakob you Kudai, know, uh, which is the actual building of the Mishkan. Vayakob Kudai, we read as we're going into Chodesh Nisan. Chodesh Nisan. Just like all those years ago, that's when they actually erected the Mishkan. Also, the Nase of Nisan, the Nase of Pesach, was not just in Machshava, but was in Lemaisa. Akash Baruch Lemaisa took us out, Me'avdus Lecherus. We were Lemaisa, chosen. In Purim, it was, the renewal was more in Machshava than in Maisa, in the sense that Akati Avdi Achashverosh, we're still the Avodim of Achashverosh, that didn't change. And that's why we don't say Halal on Purim, because we're still under Achashverosh. We weren't actually taken out of Golas. Just we were in our minds and hearts taken out of Golas. We did Tshuva Me'ava. We reaccepted the Torah. We, uh, we realized that it's a nace, even though the nace was hidden. Right? So that's all. It, you know, Purim is more in Machshava than it is Lemaisa. Right? Even though there was a Lemaisa aspect that they did go kill on a killing spree. Mm-hmm. You know, on Tanis Esther. Right? But it's more, uh, more machshava than it is maisa. The recognition that there was a nace here. Even though the geopolitical status of the Jewish people didn't change, we were still in Golis. Bayesheni had not yet been built yet. But nonetheless, you know, it was, uh, so it was more in realization. Right? 
that our Kosh Baruch is with us and our Kosh Baruch dwells within us than in actually becoming physically manifest for the whole rest of the world to see, like Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, and like the Binyan of the Mishkan Lemaisa, which happens in uh, Nisan. Right? And we explained that that's why on a regular year, Pur, you know, uh, Purim is before Parshas Kisisa. Because right? um, Parshas Kisisa is where we failed. It's where the Yetzirah got restored after we were purified. You saw Shomdu Ar Sinai, Pascha Zua Masan. Right? We had Mamad Ar Sinai. We were temporarily like Adam Rishon before the sin, and the Yetzirah was on the outside. The Chedego may, you know, made the Yetzirah have a comeback. And where does the Yetzirah sit? Where does he sit? He sits between the Machshava and the Maisa. Like the Gemara says, Ritzonenu Lasos Ritzon. God, you know, we want to do what you want. El mi ma'akev sor shabi isa v'shibud ma'achias. Right, it's, you know, it's the sor shabi isa, it's the Yetzihara, the chametz, and the shibud ma'achias, and you know, it's the gullus. They get in the way, they get in the way. But a Jew's heart is pure. A Jew ideologically is pure, his failure is in Misa. He doesn't you know, manage to live up to what he really believes in. So that's the Indian that, you know, between the Mishkan in Machshava and the Mishkan in Maisa is the Cheda Ego. That's where the Yetzor sits, between the Machshava and the Maisa. Right? And, when, and the Purim is all about that the, Mach, the Mishkan of the heart is always there and always pure and never destroyed. The Mishkan in Maisa, you know, we have to be Zohar to be speedily rebuilt. Right? But in, this is all in a regular year. Now in a leap year, we already mentioned there's a, you know, leap year is to close the gap between the solar cycle and the lunar cycle. And we explained this uh, on our drusha to Purim Cotton. Right. What do we explain over there? That the gap between the sun and the moon, the moon is smaller, and that's why it also has a shorter cycle. That's all part of the miut right? That, you know, that's why night is so dark, because the moon that lights up the night is so much smaller than the sun. Right? So it became smaller and connected that cycle became shorter. Miut hayareach, right, is what gives room for the darkness. That's why night is dark. That's why there's darkness in the world. Darkness in the world also represents all the ra in the world. Right? So making the world lema'ase, lema'ase, a, a better place, and lema'ase, vanquishing the ra, is l'osid lavo, that's what we dab in vaya oral avona karachama, Right, what the Navi says, the moon will shine as, shine as brightly as the sun. That's also, there won't be any darkness, because day is not dark, and night won't be dark either. That's when the Ra will be removed from the world. Right, that the Miud Hayareach is going to be uh, supplemented for. The Laila Kiyoyim Yoyer, and night will shine as brightly as day. It means there won't be any more darkness, or there won't be any more evil in the world. And that's the Tikkun of Lemaisa. Lemaisa. That's what, the, the, that's what we need mitzvahs in Misa for. Because the, the world of Misa is the world that's tainted with evil. That's why mitzvahs are called a candle. Kiner mitzvah v'toror. You need a candle by day? No, you need a candle by night. Candle is how we supplement for the moon. Because you know, the moon doesn't shine up the night enough. We need candles. The mitzvahs are called candles. Kiner mitzvah. Right? Mitzvahs that we do with our guf, which is to put Kedusha into the world of Misa. You know, the world of Machshava, we would like to believe, remains pure, at least by Jews, right? But it's the world of Misa that needs to be illuminated, right? Illuminated with candles. Why do you need candles? You need candles at night because the moon is not big yet, not as big as the sun. That's Kiner Mitzvah. We need mitzvahs for candles to uh, dispel the darkness, right? So now, uh, in, in this year, right, of, um, of, uh, of uh, Shnata Ibor, that we have uh, an extra Ador to merge the two cycles, right? And we spoke about that. We mentioned the going last time, that the 10 days between uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are the 10 days that the... Uh, Zerge Tshuva. Zerge Tshuva, which is you need Tshuva because the, how the lunar cycle is shorter than the solar cycle... And Yom Kippur is when the two catch up and they're in the same track. Everything's reconciled. Three sets of Aser Sumei are the 30 days of Ador Sheni. Right? We mentioned that. that it's, it's the Koach of, it's the whole year of Koach of Tshuva. The Koach to, um, right, to close the gap. Close the gap between, 
you know, the, the moon and the sun, to close the gap also between the machshava and the maisa, right, that the maisa gets a little bit closer to the machshava. Right? And that's why in a, in a leap year, Purim is on the other side of Kisisa. Purim, which represents the koach of the mishkan b'machshava, the mishkan that we have with us in our hearts, the mishkan that we take with us, even in Gauls, that the Shekhinah is with us wherever we go. Even our being Tomei, the Shechina is Shochin with us, the Shechina is with us there in, in the days of Mordechai and Esther in Golis, protecting us. Why normally it's when? Purim is before Kisiza? That's right. In the regular year. Titzavah. Oh. And here it coincides with which uh, Parsha? You know, so now Purim comes out, all in Vayikra. Wow. Yeah. The Parsha Shkolim, which is uh, the beginning of uh, the process, is uh, Parsha Svayakel. Purim is, you know, comes out on the other side of the Kisisa barrier, because there's like a closening. It's like we're, you know, closing the gap between the solar and the lunar. It's also to close the gap between the Machshava and Maisa, which is where the Yetzirah sits. He sits in that gap. And that gap created by the Miut Halavana, we're closing that gap. Right, so Purim, which is the power of like, you know, at least ideologically, even, even when the chips are down, right, you know, as far as the, how things look from the outside, right, how things look on the outside, in the Pneumius, the Shechina is with us. Hiddenly, the Shechina is with us, wherever we are. Right? Uh, that, you know, uh, that Tikkun becomes more Lemaisa in this year. It becomes more Lemaisa. We're closing the gap between Machshava and Maisa. As a, uh, the Koch of Machshava bleeds through even more to the Maisa. So, it's the whole thing about being, I'm good at heart, I'm good. Well, that heart shines through more to the Lemaisa level on a leap year. Mm-hmm. You're closing the gap between the heart and the action. So, what's the tickle that needs to be done by us? Right, so I'm saying the, you know, in a, in a year like this, Purim is less theoretical and more lamasa. Right, it's. Uh, uh, double this year. <laughs> what's what's the? No, I mean, that means the tikkun. It's a bigger. Uh, it, the, the tikkun is more manifest. It's it's yeah, less a tikkun. Have to do something for it. It's like no, not just. It, it affects reality. It's more potent. It affects physical more reality gula. more. It's a real more. Gula. That's right, and that's what the Gemara says. The Gemara had a suffix. When should we make? Purim on a leap year, and then uh, the different svaras, and finally Gemara concludes, Mismach Gula Gula Adifa. It's better to bring the Gula of Purim to be near the Gula of Pesach. It sounds like a technicality, though. It sounds, but it's Purim. Deep is saying that because, you know, the Gula of Purim is more doime to the Gula of Pesach on this year, mm-hmm. right? On this year. It's befitting to be near. It's befitting for the two gulos to be near each other. Because that's really, that's mismach the gula of machshava, the renewal of, of the, uh, the values that they kimu v'kiblu in days of Mordechai Vester, and the gula of lomaisa. These two gulos are, you know, the gap between them. There should not be a gap between them. You should, you should look at it that they move Purim to be closer to Pesach. That's right, that's right instead of doing that Rishon. Right? They move Purim to be closer to Pesach because the Gula of Purim is now more similar in this year to the Gula of Pesach. Gula of Pesach was Lemaisa, not, the, not just um, theoretically and ideologically. Right? This year it's more Dome to the Gula of Pesach. Okay? And therefore, you know, uh, you know, the Arba Parsha, we begin the, uh, the countdown to Purim, the process that leads up to Purim, you know, starts now already in, uh, you know, and start already, I mean, it was delayed to now start in the Parshas that deal with the Lemaisa building of the Mishkan. Not the Mishkan of the heart, the Mishkan and Maisa. Because in this year, Purim is more Lemaisa than it is in regular years. It, the Tikkun, the effect it has on physical reality is more potent. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, you know, the, as it were, the renewal of the heart bleeds through and shines more into the realm of Maisa on this year, more than other years. Right? But it still remains the, uh, it still remains 
even on the Lamaisa Dika level, it still remains this vor. It's the machshava shining through to the Maisa. But it's still be'ikar, the koach of machshava. And that's what the Megillah says. Hayami mele niskarim vinasim. These days are remembered and performed. Bechosha, there's zechira and asiyah. There's zechira and asiyah. Right? And that's like in the Mochem HaSamog, there was zechira v'asiyah. Right? There was Moshe Rabbeinu with his hands up. Calls Manchisom Mistaklim Klape Mala, Mishab is here. Moshe Bear's hands up, Amiso reminds Akarish Bar, who is Maskir, to be Mishabidim Lavim Shabashamayim. And then there's the Asiya to actually kill Amalek with the sword. Right? Is that like a mitzvah today, too? Of course. No, it's mitzvah Sayom and Purim, I'm saying. Yeah. Get an Amalek and. So we're Mekayim, you know, the Asi of Purim with the mitzvahs that we do b'maisa on that day, with the Taras Lev Yor, Mishloch Monas, Mikra Megillah, and at Su'uda, but it's Niskarim, it's Niskarim v'nasim, it's the Koch of Zechira. Oh, it's probably a mitzvah to watch Eichmann's trial, too. <laughs> now look, now, now, the, now this also has to do with the power of Shabbos, you know, as we're going to talk more about this when we get to Shabbos Zachar in two weeks' time, right? That, you know, Shabbos Zachar, you know, is, is a big to-do, Right, with uh, has to do with Purim, right? and uh, the place can bring the source Niz Korim Vinasim, because says Zochar Yom Shas Lakacho. Purim is a day of Asiya, of doing. So the Shabbos before is like a day of Zechira, because uh, Purim is about putting the Zikaron into the Maisa, putting the Machshava into the Maisa. So like uh, in a regular year, it's more Zikaron. Then it is Maisa on this year. It you know the 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 tikkun in Maisa is you know more expressed. Right? But even in a regular year, the Shabbos before is the Zechira, and the Purim is the day of the Asiya. That's why we read Zohar Eisah Shosal Hamod on the Shabbos before. We're kind of mitzvah Zohar. So that the poskim are masmechet to the pasuk. Remember Nizkarim Benasim. You have to have the Zechira before the Asiya. So we have to remember Maisa Hamod before the day of Purim, where we, as it were, do things that are zechar to actually killing him. To actually killing him. But it's but it's, so Purim is all about the smichus of machshava to Maisa, right? The koch of machshava bleeding through the Maisa. On this year, the koch of you know, how it how it affects Maisa is more potent because the gap between machshava and Maisa are closed. But it's an amazing thing in Parshas Vayakel, right? You know, it follows the pattern of Purim, right? How so? Right? How so? The two ways. First of all, right, the, it's Shabbos before Melech Samishkan. So where your first Moshe comes down and he joins the whole people together, right? right? And he tells them Shabbos. And then he tells them the Tzivu of Melech Samishkan. In Mayakil? Here, this week's parasha, right? So Shabbos is Zechira, right? Because on Shabbos you're not allowed to do Maisa. That's the whole point, you know. Shabbos is Osir and Melacha. Shabbos is day of just remembering. Zachar is Yom HaShabbos L'Kadshah. And then there's the Asiya, you know, building the Mishkan. Zechira before the Asiya. But it gets deeper than that. It says, Vayakom Moshe, he gathered them all together, and then he tells them Shabbos. And then he tells them about the Mishkan. Right? You know, what does it say in the Megillah? Two times before the actual Mohammed Samolik. Right? Right. Gather all the Jews together. That was by Tanis Esther. When they did the tshuva, right? they fasted for three days. Knos, gather all the Jews together. And then what does it say when it came to the Milchama? Nikaluha Yehudim. They all banded together. And then it says, and they went out and they killed. But Nikaluha Yehudim, it's a term used over and over again. So much so that the Bavli says the reason, you know, that you, know, you don't need a source that if need be, if Shabbos, if Purim goes out on Shabbos, you can read the Megillah on Yud Gimel, on Tanis Esther, you know, read it early, because Yud Gimel, Zman Kehila Lakoi, as a pun on words of Nikalua Yudim. Yushami Taka says, Yom Milchama, it was the day of Milchama, the Bavli hops onto Nikalua Yehudim. Right, that, you know, even though it says, Nikalua Yudim, for Amor Anafshem, they got together and they stood up for their lives, 
right? Nikalui v'har, you know, and v'harog v'abed, right? Right, but it's still nikalu. It starts with nikalu. First banding together. First band, and then doing it, killing. Like Vayakil Moshe, by Shabbos. Mm-hmm. And then, the actual building of the Mishkan. There's something very, very deep to think about. Right, so first of all, that Shabbos is a day of Achdus, we know. We spoke about this a few times. That on Shabbos, that's the Isra of Hotzah, Mirashus, Lurashus. Everything should be just in Rashus Hayachid. Singular domain, which represents being in God's domain, Rishus Yechido Shul Olam. You're not allowed to be in Rishus Arabim, meaning do anything in Rishus, you know, carry in Rishus Arabim. You should be in Rishus Hayochid. You should only be, you know, you're only allowed to carry, go do your day. Yeah, but Rishus Arabim only, is only a specific place, a specific amount of people pass through. Very few places in the world that are considered Rishus Arabim. That, that is true. I'm not, not disputing that. But the, the principle is, nonetheless, that the um, right, Shabbos is supposed to be in Al Yetzei Ish Mim Komo, everyone should be in, you know, proper place, you know, together. Together, in Rishus Hayochid, everything band together, one Rishus, one Rishus, like Achdus. That's what it says in the Kegavna, that Shabbos, everything is Misyachid, Le'ela Be'echad, everything is Brozad Hashem, it's the day of Achdus. So it's very apropos that Moshe Beidu told Am Yisrael B'Kihila, the mitzvah of Shabbos. Right? But the Kihila comes before the Asiya, building the Mishkan. Right? That's also, you know, we're, it's something very deep to think about. Where is Achdus? Where is Achdus? It's just a, it's just a thought. Achdus doesn't exist in physical reality. You know, every person's separate. Every guy does his thing. Achdus, Achdus, doing something together. I mean, I do my thing. You, I, you do your thing. I do my half. You do your half. It's an idea. It's a concept. Achdus is a concept. Physically, everybody stands alone, and everybody's action is his own action. It's a concept. That you know, that we're doing things in unison. All right. Donald Ach- Trump said he's going to be the big unifier. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> big divider. Yeah. It, it's it's a concept, Achdus. Right. But it's a concept that makes all the difference in the world. But when we do things together, we're more effective. But but what is Achdus? It's not something physical. It has a tremendous effect on physicality, because. In Achdus, things get done and things uh, are more potent and more. But it, Achdus is a concept. Yeah. This idea that we're united. That's all. It's, a, it's, it's, it's all in the mind that we're all united. Everyone's just still as his own separate body and doing his own separate mindset. It's a concept. Right? Achdus is a concept. Being Nikalua Yehudim is a concept. But it's a concept that Mamish makes all the difference on physical reality. Because if you band together, you could accomplish more if you're separate. Even though Lama said, when everyone's separate, everyone's doing their thing. Everyone's together, everyone's doing his body, doing his thing. But that concept makes all the difference in the world. So Nikola Yehudim, they were all unified. And they, uh, and, and uh, together, in their unity, they will defeat the Goyim. When Am Yisrael's Ba'achdus, the concept of Achdus is something spiritual. So when we're Ba'achdus, right, you know, no one could take us. When we're Ba'achdus, we're only under our Kurdish Baruch because the power of Achdus is actually an extension of Yichud Hashem. The power of Achdus is, on, is power on loan from God's unity. That's how unified. But it's something spiritual, it's not something physical. So it's a concept. And then that's the Koch of Purim, right? That, you know, Amisol is Ba'achdus. Esther started with like a Kenosis Koim, got them all together, and then it followed through, that Koch followed through to become Nikalua Yehudim. And then Vomar Asher, and that's how they Mamish, you know, took on and killed 75,000 people on one day, all in one day, and, you know, uh, yeah. That's the Koch, that's the Koch, the Koch of concept, how the Koch of concept is Mashpia. Right is mashpia on Maisa. Right? 
and and that's you know and and that that's that's the Indian of machetzis shekel. That you know, Koshbul tells Haman for Kadmu Shkilem Lishkolecha. Haman thought, I've got money, money is power, right? And I'm giving even much more silver than what Amisor gave in the Midbar for Machsis Hashekel. The Mesh says, Koshbul who laughed at him and says they gave their Shkolem first, and that's why Bachad Ba'adr Mashmi Malashkolem. So it's very interesting, Bachad, even to be Makayim, that we give our Shkolem before his, we're Makayim that with Parsha Shkolem. You know, we don't actually give the Machsis Hashekel then. It's just mashmiim. It's just the message, right? Because uh, Haman thinks, right, that money is power, right? And should be therefore whoever has more money has more power, right? Machsis Hashekel is what ha'asher lo yarbe v'adal lo yamid. It's a whole new perspective. Money. Everyone has to give exactly the same. Even guy has more, but he still only gives machzis hashekel, right? Right? You know, and uh, the poor guy, even though he's very poor, still has to give machzis hashekel. What does that teach you? Right? What does that teach you? That everyone is unified at the same, the same time. Yeah, everyone makes the same contribution. Money is not power. Money is not power. Right? Everyone makes their contribution, right? And everyone's contribution is equal. Everyone has their mission from God. Machsis HaShekel says, right, that everyone, everyone has, is equally important as far as Yitnu. What do they give to the world? What you really accomplish in the world. The person who has more money doesn't accomplish more. He doesn't. The Machsis HaShekel is, as it were, the shurish of money. Kesef Besharsho, in Sharsh, everyone accomplishes the same amount. A millionaire who has millions doesn't accomplish more than a poor person. Right? He just has more money stuff. He doesn't necessarily contribute more to reality. What did you contribute? How did you make the world a better place? How did you make the world more holy? How did you make the world or every Jew could contribute the same amount? Zayitnu. This is what everyone contributes. Everyone gives the same machzis shekel. Just my machzis shekel doesn't look the same as yours. Right? You know, because my mission is different. But in Sharish, everyone is equally as important. Right? You can't have Achdus, right? If there are some people who are more, you know, bad and better than others. Right? You can't have Achdus. Right? But you also can't have Achdus if everyone thinks he's perfect. Mm-hmm. So everyone gives, everyone contributes the same, but everyone could choose what? Only Chetzi. Only a half. I need you to be my other half. And that's how you could have Achtos. Achtos is two things. First of all, everyone's equally as important. There's no fifth wheel on the cart. Everyone's equally as important. right? But also, no one is whole by himself. I'm only Chetzi. And you're also only Chetzi. And that's why we need each other. To be Mashlim. To be Mashlim, to complement. Because without each other, we're just Chetzi. Right? Haman thinks money is power. Money is not bad. It's in power. You know, see, uh, money is just another thing that people give, but everyone equally uh, makes the same contribution. And no one has bad. more important. You know, is not more important to the bria than someone else. Everyone equally makes their own unique contribution, and everyone is equally lacking. And and needs to be mushlam, you know, by his fellow Jew, or be mushlam also by a Baruch Hu. Right? No one is whole. Right? So bechad bara mashvim al We have to remember what money is about. Right? We have to learn less that money itself is not power. Right? Uh, money is just another resource that passes through us. Right? But as far as what we contribute, everyone contributes the same amount to the world. Someone who has more money doesn't necessarily make a bigger contribution. And so the Mishkan that boiled it all down to the Shirish, in Shirish, at the root of the matter, everyone makes the same equally important contribution to the Bria, and no one, no one is a whole thing in his own right. You need a Kurdish Baruch to be Mashamu, you need your fellow Jew to be Mashamu. You're just Chetzi. Right? 
no one is Shalem in his own right. right? Amalek thinks, you know, I don't need God. I have a lot of money. I don't need God. Machsa right? Sashakur reminds us that no matter how much money you have, you don't contribute more than the poor guy to the reality, and you're also equally as needy of your fellow Jew and of God. You're only chetzi. Right? But you have to see money that way to be above the power of money. You know, how much come with the power of money, like Donald, right? Power of money, right? Right? You know, about money, you have to realize, you know, you have to see through it. You have to see through it that everyone's equally as important and yet everyone is equally as lacking that he needs HaKadosh Baruch Hu and his fellow Jew to be mashlim him. Right? So therefore, this is how, in order to have Vayakel, that we all get together with the Koch of Achtus. And the Koch of Achtus is recognition, I need my fellow Jew and I need HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And those two recognitions go together. And that's how you have Achtus. Because Achtus is something spiritual, it comes from God, you have to recognize you need God. You also have to recognize that you need your fellow Jew. Right? And that's the opposite of sinas chinam. Because people thought, you don't need their fellow Jew, I could do without my fellow Jew. And my fellow Jew is just a threat to me. He depletes my risk. So our says, if you don't think you need your fellow Jew, then I'm out of it also. So you don't need your fellow Jews either. So I take away my base I take away my ashra sashchina. Machsis HaShekel is that, yeah, I contribute something. My contribution is not better than yours. And for everything that I contribute, I'm still only a half. So I need my fellow Jew and I need God. And when you have those two recognitions, you have the Koch of Achtus, which is the call, which is something spiritual, comes from God. You have to recognize that you need God, and God doesn't come to you unless you recognize that you also need your fellow Jew, because he's just as important in doing my work as you are. So you need machatzitz hashekel to have vayakel. Right? And that's the niskarim that you have before the asiyah. That with the, with the concept of achtos, which is all more in concept than it is physically measurable, it's all kind, but it makes all the difference in the world. And that's the meaning of the ibrior, that, you know, that the koch of machshava has more of an impact on lemaisa. And that's best exemplified by the concept of achtos, that it's just a concept that people are all hooked up to the same idea, and yet it makes all the difference, because we see things done by Achtos are more potent and everlasting than things not, right? And you need Machatzis HaShekel to have Achtos. You have to realize everyone's equally as important, right? And yet, as much as everyone's equally as important, each one is only a half. We need our courage broker and we need each other. We march from ourselves with the cognizance of Machatzis HaShekel, we have Vayakel. We have the and with Vayako, which also comes from the Koch of Shabbos, right? That's why Shabbos said Kehila, right? So we have all these concepts together. We have the the Nikalu Hayehudim. We have the the Koch of the Zechira that leads to the Asiya, which vanquishes Amalek Lemaisa.